Hey everyone, welcome back to Buick Outdoors. If you're new here, my name is Sheldon Marion, and today we're out here in the woods. We're gonna be tapping some birch trees, making some syrup. Well, pretty much every year ever since I found out how to tap trees, I've been coming out here to our little birch stand and tapping birch trees pretty well every spring. Uh, you can see on some of these trees, you can tell I've been here before, got the old wood dowel plugging up the old holes, the old nail where I have my bucket, and I have that on a couple of these trees around here. And uh, it's always a nice little way to get out of the house during the springtime, kind of finally break away from the winter's grip that it's got on you, and uh, start tapping some trees. But anyways, we're gonna start with uh, a couple of these ones right over here. And I'll set up the camera and show you guys everything that you need so you can come out here and top birch trees for yourself. Alrighty, so first things first, I got my drill with me and I have a 7 16th drill bit. And we're just going to tap into this birch tree here. The reason why we use a 7 16th drill bit is because the taps that we use are half inch, so this drill bit. It's slightly smaller than the top, and that way when you put the top into the hole that's made by the bit, it'll create a really nice seal. And I try to find a spot that's fairly flat on the tree. Right here is nice, and I want that because my cup is gonna be sitting there. So if my cup's gonna be sitting here, I'll do the hole right about here. Pretty well go in until you see that white bark and you see here, tree's already running. So now what I use are these half inch, uh, they're basically just male by male uh, hose connectors. Find these at pretty well any plumbing store. I get these at Canadian Tire, Home Hardware, Rona. Take your little plug, put it in there, hammer it in, and in a few seconds you'll see it start to drip out of there. There it goes. And then because I check mine very often, I just use the little red solo cups. Uh, other years where I'm wanting a little more time between checks, I'll go out to the dollar store or whatever and buy like little one dollar sandcastle buckets kind of a thing. And then that's when I use like a two inch nail. I hammer that into the tree and then hang the uh, bucket just off the nail. But because I live right around the corner, I'm able to come out here quite often. So I just take a thumb tack, put it through the cup, go underneath the tree, or put it underneath the top, I mean, tack it to the tree, and there we go. So now what we have, a little red solo cup, our top, and it's going to sit there and just steadily drip so you can sit there and just steadily drip into our cup and uh looking at this thing that's going to be full i don't know within uh well oh, a couple hours for sure there's already a pretty good little bit collecting there but uh yeah we're gonna keep going around here we'll top some more trees and we're all gonna do it the same way 7 16th drill bit well, that far, you know, about half inch into the tree. You have to get into that layer of, of the wood where the sap and all the water is actually running up. And then uh, put in your minimal male fitting. Some people put a little hose there, run it down to a bucket kind of a thing. But if you just want to keep it nice and simple, red solo cup, 
tack and you're producing sap already but anyways guys we're gonna get busy here and we're gonna start topping some more trees All right, so it's not, it kind of sounds weird, but I broke off these branches to get them out of the way for a little angle on the camera. But now even the branches are dripping, so I'm gonna get Shelby to suck on the branch. No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> sucking on I branch. sucked on this one. Look at this. You can see how much is dripping just from breaking off the branch. See that right there? I'm telling you, I'll it's. I'll taste it, but I'm not sucking on a branch. Yeah. Like suck on it right there. It's gonna taste like watermelon. <laughs> it does taste like watermelon. <laughs> See? It's actually pretty good. <laughs> See this one here is about to drip. Even I'll do it. Tastes good. Tastes like watermelon, you can kind of suck it right out of the branch. I don't tell you. I don't make the rules. I just uh, suck on the trees, I guess. <laughs> well we made her to our first set of cups here up in the trees so first things first we gotta let the old dogs out then we'll grab our buckets and we'll start walking around and collecting all of our cups here pretty well what we're gonna be doing is just kind of pulling the pin dump the cup into a bucket put the cup back on and go on about our day Me when you
Alrighty guys, well I think we finally have enough sap here uh, to start running our first batch of syrup. Uh, we've had some just phenomenal weather here. Last couple of days went from like plus 13 to raining and then snowing and sleet. But uh, thankfully I got my little northbound gear set up on. I got the apex jacket and the adventure pants. And uh, yeah, surprisingly the other day they actually kept me nice and warm and dry. If you guys want to check them out. Uh, go to northboundgear.co, use the promo code SHELDON15, you get 15% off. But uh, yeah, I'm going to grab our sap here now. We got close to 10 gallons, and uh, I'm going to show you how I run my little filter system. And then once we get everything filtered, we'll put it into the pot and we'll get the boil going. Alrighty guys, so here is my very, very simple filtering system. I have a clean five gallon bucket and on the inside I just have a game bag that I drape over and I just pull it all down until there's just this slight little dip in here and then when we pour our uh, sap into this it'll collect all the bugs and bark and and uh, pretty well whatever else has kind of fallen into your cups and in your bucket uh, while you're out collecting the sap but uh, it's a pretty straightforward easy thing to do take your lid off grab your bucket just slowly pour it in Once you have all your zap poured in there, simply take this, pull that off, and now we're able to take our sap, transfer it into our uh, our pot here for boiling, and then we'll be good to go. quite able to get all of it in there but as this boils down I will just keep topping it up with new fresh uh, sap and eventually it'll start to smell pretty good in here but uh, anyways I'm gonna get the flame going here I'm gonna get this boiling I'm gonna filter the rest of what we have there so when it's all ready to go and uh, yeah. now we're on to making syrup Alrighty, so I just got word that Dad's on his way out with another 210 liters of sap. He's been uh, tapping out uh, closer to town. So I'm going to get my second uh, pot going here. And then he's also bringing out another burner. So we'll have three burners going in here. So now that we got two pots going, uh, we still have uh, maybe a gallon and a half, almost two gallons of uh, sap sitting in a bucket. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let these boil right down. Uh, what I might end up doing, depending on what time Dad gets here, uh, we might transfer one into the other, or we'll just keep topping them up uh, once his Dad gets here. But uh, yeah, once we get down to wherever it is, maybe a few inches from the bottom, we'll top them up, and we'll get them there. 
So now we've been boiling this down here for a few hours. You can see that uh, we're getting down quite a bit. There's only probably about two or three inches in that pot. So now I'm just going to grab our uh, filter top. I'm going to top this one up and this one. This one will start a lot later than that one. So there's quite a bit in there, but I'll grab the bucket and we'll top them up. And just like that, we got our sap all topped up. And we'll just basically repeat the process until we're completely out of sap and we're ready to finish this off in the house. Alrighty guys, so we brought this into the house here now and it's starting to foam up pretty good. So we're pretty well done here now. You can see it sticks to the back side of that spoon when you go to pour it out slightly. So it is going to get a bit thicker. The problem right now though is uh, once you start to kind of cook it further than this, it will start to get a slight bitter taste. Right now it's still extremely sweet, but I'm kind of worried that if I cook it any longer, I might scorch it slightly and then uh, you'll end up getting a real bitter. So what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to let this cool down a little bit and then I'll uh, get a couple of jars ready in the meantime and then uh, we'll get this all jarred up. Alrighty guys, so we've had this uh, turned off here for a little bit now, uh, letting it cool down a little bit. Uh, I'm not exactly too sure how much sap it took to make this much syrup, I think between uh, the stuff that I had and the stuff that dad brought over, I want to say I boiled down around 100 liters of sap. Uh, so what I got is these 500 milliliter uh, mason jars. And the reason why I'm using such big ones this time is because we got bear camp coming up within the next, uh, well, next week. So we'll be using these, you know, we'll be using this almost every couple of days. We're making pancakes, waffles you know french toast whatever plus i'm going to be doing a pile of cooking with it uh so with that being said i'm also not going to be preserving this stuff uh, i'm just putting it into the mason jars if you want to preserve it uh make sure everything's sanitized and then put it into a water bath for i don't know probably about 10 minutes or so i uh, check with your canning book for that but anyways we'll uh we'll start scooping this up and we'll see how much we actually got out of this. And there we have it that's one and a half liters of beautiful dark dark birch syrup <laughs> you see how it's still fairly runny but uh, right now uh, it was starting to get just the slightest little bit of a not a burn taste, but it was starting to lose its sweetness. I really don't want that. Plus, when it cools down, it'll get quite a bit thicker yet, too. But anyways, guys, that is the whole process of uh, making some just amazing birch syrup. And, uh, you know, it, it tastes kind of like a caramel, molasses, maple syrup kind of a combo it's it's a phenomenal flavor 
it's you know it's fun to go out to the bush and do it uh and it's nice and relaxing when you're boiling it all down too and you have your shack just you're smelling this stuff for for a day or two as you're boiling it down so i really encourage you guys to head out to the bush uh and give this a go uh if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the little like button down in the corner uh leave us a comment or two let us know how your uh syrup made out uh also uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel we have a video coming out every friday and starting next week here roughly uh we're gonna be back out in bear camp so there's gonna be all sorts of camping and bear hunting videos coming your way anyways guys again thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh we'll catch you on the next one well you guys i'm gonna interrupt right here for a minute and i just gotta tell you about northbound gear uh you know as you can see today we woke up to a lot of snow in the springtime anyways you know we got rain snow sleet the wind's blowing a little bit we're out here it looks like i'm drenched but surprisingly i'm not i'm wearing the northbound gear apex jacket i got northbound gear adventure pants and i can tell you even though it looks like I'm soaking wet and I look like a washed up rat, I'm actually staying nice and dry and uh, like really warm. 